This is what you do when you're waiting for a 3D printer. Hey there, Mission Control. Well, it's been about two hours in my life uh, sitting out here waiting for this practice print to uh, come out, but for you, it's probably been about a day. Uh, so we're gonna, the print just finished. We're gonna see how the 50% print of a grow wall back panel came out. All right, already off the bat, this is better uh, than what we had before. Uh, what I'm expecting when we get this off, because I'm not letting it cool, is it'll probably warp a little bit. Uh, which is fine for this first go. You can put that over there and maybe just let it sit for a little bit. Put that off. And while that's sitting, I'm going to go get the full size print started. The well, back layer looks excellent. It only printed one layer because uh, of the scale. But if you remember that when I printed the scale version before, it really did not turn out well. And this turned out really really quite nice it looks like we have really good bonds between each layer uh, we don't have the wiggly lines that we had on the uh, big one so let me go show you we'll shut this keep the heat in and uh, let's go compare all right well here you can see the first full-size print that we did um, as we continue to make progress here and here is the 50 50 percent size print uh, we have some structure that we need to remove here. We might have to use some, some tools to get that off. It's smaller. And we got some structure in there as well to remove. This is the one here. Everybody wants this one. The go-to tool here for 3D printing. That is really on there. You know what, because of scale, it might be too small. It looks like we have some mistakes back here as well. There's a hole that goes there. So that's what that issue is. That did not fill in very well though. We have a gap there around the hole, but I think that's a scale issue again. These things are not very thick uh, by design. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the support structure out. No, it, normally they come right out, but I think because it is so small, it probably turned into there's really only one layer on this thing. Um, so that's uh, 0.8 millimeters. Oh, I got this other little batch of tools here. I don't know, you think they'll work? I don't know, who knows? I'll try it. I'm trying to get behind it. I'm not pushing into it. I'm trying to get behind it. And then it should kind of come out like a zipper. But it just doesn't want to do that. And this side is about the same. No, yeah, it did. Because of scale, it's just too small. That's fine. That's nice. Can't get the support structure off of there, but as far as the grill wall goes, it is a nice, nice grill wall test back of it. And the, the definition here for a single print or a single layer came out really nice as well. So I, I think we're on the right track. Well, there we go, we got the uh, full size one, uh, the perimeter just printed on it. That perimeter is there so that if you're going from one, well, what I like about the perimeter being there, I shouldn't say the reason is there, but is it helps make sure that the nozzle and everything is cleared out and ready to go um, for your next print. If there's gonna be a mistake in the uh, perimeter, you're gonna see it very quickly and you don't want that mistake happening on your actual print. One another thing that I did is um, I made sure that this print, instead of being printed right directly in the middle where it goes over that seam, uh, which created a, a little bit of a bump because of the dirt and stuff I got in there when I put it together, not their fault, my fault. Um, I shifted it over, so we'll do one panel here. We'll do another panel over here when we're getting um, at, at full rate here, uh, once we prove this one works. So, um, we're going to see if this side is sloped and then we'll need to do another one over here on this side and make sure that everything works good. But given the test print and given everything we figured out and given how accurate everything is now compared to what it was before, um, I have very high hopes for all of this. I think it's going to turn out well. So I'm going to go inside, take a shower, have some dinner and then come back out here and you guys will get the benefit of uh, fast forwarding through time and uh, seeing what 
tomorrow brings. Hopefully not a big crow's nest. Total time on this print is supposed to be 18 hours. Well, it's the next day, but I did not have to wait until the next day to know what happened last night. I actually had to come out here. I forgot my phone out here and I came out last night after I showered and I checked on it and I'm glad I did because it would be a spaghetti kind of day if I did not check on it. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna zoom in here for you. A little focus there, there you go, see the spaghetti? So I don't know exactly what happened here, but it definitely is having some problems. I'm not sure exactly what went wrong. So I just stopped it completely. And we're gonna restart, but I don't see it hung up on anything. It printed the perimeters fine. I really, it might be a gap in there. Maybe that's it. G32 code, that doesn't look good. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. I don't know what G32 means. And I know what that is because I don't. Here's the model of printing. See, we're doing it all on one side. And I redid this model to make sure the back was completely flat. It's lying on the surface because we use the surface command to put it there. I don't see a gap. All right, let's look from the top, and then we'll reduce our layers. This is the first layer. Oh, it all looks good. This looks good. I don't know, what is that? It's an X. Oh, that looks like just an arrow. Oh yeah, that's an X for the X axis. <laughs> yeah. All right, the new print has started. Yay, us. I'm gonna have to vacuum out down there. All the little pieces get falling down there. So, we gotta watch this for a long time. The perimeter print's fine. Bed adhesion is good. Um, we got no spindly things, except for what we saw there. Uh, but that was all, that's all on the inside. That's inner fill. That's the first layer. It shouldn't be doing that. And it wasn't hung up on anything. So it's quite, quite the mystery here, but hopefully maybe it was just a one, one time thing. I'll have to watch it as it goes around. And, and this is why I can't go do something else and it's so frustrating because I got to be here and make sure we get these initial calibrations and everything going just right. And then you can go and do other stuff and just let it go. What I have uh, found with my Creelty 3D uh, printer, which is a, a very large printer as well. I mean, relatively speaking, it's, it's fairly large is compared to this, it's small. Um, it, it takes like two or three real prints until you get the thing dialed in. And then after it's dialed in, geez, as long as you don't hit it, bump it, move it, like really, I mean, you can touch it and do all that, but if you like hit the stand and move it quite a bit, then you have to redo things. But if you just get it set and, and dial it in, then you don't have to move it around. And that's the same process we're going through here. The issue is the prints are so much larger, it takes a lot more time to go through that process. So, to YouTube we go. All right, so it's putting the holes in now. And after it puts the holes in, which are going down nice, the perimeter went down nice. The first outline of the inner fill went down nice. And now we're watching closely to see what happens here. It looks like on the hole that there's a little loop of uh, material that poked up a little bit and I'm wondering if maybe the nozzle grabbed it on the last one and then shook the whole thing loose. But this one's going down nice. Yeah, so far these movements are looking good. Now it's going over that area that could be problematic uh, where maybe it accidentally grabbed a little piece but that, that looks, um, that's fine. What's happening here is fine. Looks real good in fact. This is what you do when you're waiting for a 3D printer. Air guitar to Thunderstruck. And you gotta have drums, come on, you can't beat the drums. So you guys are wondering how the print turned out. It looks pretty good.
Pretty good. See if we can get it off of here. Oh. Good bed adhesion, but not too much. That is a big print. And static. Look at that, huh? We did it. Yeah, Bandit, what do you think, huh? We gotta get all the support off of there without breaking it. But that, that is salt. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Let's put it down, see what we got here. We'll get another one started. All right, the old Bandit and I have been out here. We got the, most of the supports taken off here. A little bit more to go. Underneath the supports, we have a little bit of a quality issue that I need to look into. But overall, remember where we were at a few days ago? We couldn't even get a good print. It didn't print the, uh, oh, the supports that go right down the middle of it. Oh, because when I took the, uh, when I thinned it out, because we had too much material, I thinned it out. I had hid those uh, so I could do the thinning and I didn't turn them back on. Oh, oh there were spacers that were in here so that uh, uh, it wouldn't bow. Darn it. Well, uh, we can still do, we can still make this work. Uh, but we will need to fix that, obviously. Supposed to have those right there. Darn it. Darn it. All right, well, we'll see how the front panel turns out. All right, we just finished printing the front panel. Ran out of filament was the only thing that I had to take care of while it was going. We have really good bed adhesion, and it already looks like we have some quality issues on it that I'm not sure what caused them, so I'll show you that once we get it out of here. Oh no, we got not good adhesion on that section there. All right, so on the front side, which is the side that is facing out, customer facing, uh, we have a nice, <laughs> You know, 3D print smooth, 3D print smooth. I won't call it smooth because it is a 3D printed smooth surface. But on the back here, we have quite a bit of lines that are way out of whack. I mean, those aren't even close to being where they're supposed to be as far as quality goes. So that's really interesting and I'm not sure what created that. I think I'm gonna have to call the manufacturer on that one and see what would have created that problem. We also have a separation down here. And this actually looks, we got the squiggly lines are back going up, which we did not have on the, uh, actually it looks like it's offset. Yeah, it looks like it was printing on the wrong, it was, it printed. Looks like it got offset somehow on there. It did. Ah, uh ha -huh. Yeah, it sure did. So uh, somewhere along the lines, it had a driver, yeah, a stall and it shifted it. What is that? About an eighth of an inch over. That must be what's causing all of that. So we'll have to figure out what caused that. The only thing I could think of is that the filament got stuck somewhere. So this is a failed, uh, successful failure, I guess, is what we call it. Because uh, we were able to make it this far. We haven't made it this far before, so that's a good thing. Uh, but that offset created uh, quite the mess. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing shifted. You can see it was lined, oh, it wasn't lined up there, no. Yeah, that shift definitely killed us. So that's not good. We'll have to figure that out. For now, I think that's it for 3D printing this week. Uh, it's Saturday. I've been inside working, uh, doing a bunch of planning. 
and uh, I think uh, we're just going to go ahead and shut her down and uh, re-attack this thing on Monday. We've got additional parts to print as well. Now we've made it this far, we can actually start printing some of the other pieces on the other side of the bed because we're only using one side of the bed for these panels. I also think these panels might be a little too big. Um, I think I could. I think I might be able to get away with uh, killing, you know, this section right here and just going with three. And these are all spaced at six inch spacing uh, so that the plants uh, have plenty of room to grow. <sighs> we'll find out though. Lots to think about. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Ring that little bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And if you'd like to support what we're doing, you can do so through Patreon. All the links are down below and on the homepage up above. In the meantime, everybody, this is The Real Martian. Please stay safe. Out.